Affinity Photo's macro functionality allows you to record various operations as steps. These steps can then be played back in an automated fashion and stored as macros, and they're great for speeding up your workflows. So let's take a look at how to create a simple macro. First, we need to expose the macro panel. And to do that, we can go to View, Studio, and choose Macro. OK, so there's our macro panel on the left. Uh, what we're going to do is create a simple macro that inpaints the transparent areas we get as a result of straightening an image. So before I actually start recording, I'm going to straighten the image. I'll select the Crop tool, choose Straighten from the Context toolbar, then I'll just click drag across the horizon line, release the mouse button, and click Apply to commit my crop. Now the reason we don't record this as part of the macro is because we could be doing this to multiple images, and each image is going to require slightly different rotational angles in order to correct the crooked horizon. So there's not much point in recording that as part of the macro. However, now we can start recording in order to record the steps for inpainting the transparent areas. So we'll click the red icon to start recording. And our first step wants to be layer, rasterize and trim. What this does is essentially discard the image information outside of our current crop. And it's an important first step if we intend to inpaint. Next, we need to select the transparent areas. So we can go to Select, Alpha Range, Select Fully Transparent. OK. If I just zoom in here, we can see we've now selected the transparent areas. But actually, we need a bit of overlap on the selection into the original image. And this is to ensure a seamless blend when we inpaint the new content. So we can go to Select and Grow slash Shrink. OK, let's set a radius of about two pixels and click Apply. And as we can see now, the selection just slightly overlaps the image, which is what we want. Then we need to go to Edit and InPaint. And this will perform the inpainting operation. Now notice as I've gone through these steps, they're being recorded as part of our macro here. And actually, at any point, we can edit the macro and disable certain steps, which will stop them from playing back if we rerun the macro. OK, now we've got our inpainted content. We can go to Select and Deselect to get rid of the marquee selection. And that is our finished macro. So we can now stop recording by clicking here. And we could run our macro straight away to ensure it works, but what we'll do is save it to a library. So we can click Add to Library here. We only have a default category for now, so let's just enter a name for our macro. Let's call it InPaint After Straighten. Click OK. And it will save it to our library and automatically bring up the library panel for us here. So there's our macro. Now, if I just move across to the history panel and move the history back to the beginning, to where we had our crooked image, let's repeat the procedure, but this time use the macro to demonstrate how it works. So I'll select the crop tool, straighten, straighten the horizon, click apply. And then instead of going through all of those additional steps, I can just run my macro. It will perform all of those steps for me. And I now have my end result with the transparent areas inpainted. So just to round out the video, a couple of pointers. This is our default library, which we have when we run the app. We can create a new category. So Here's our new category just called Macros down here. I can click this little burger menu icon and rename. So for example, I could call this category James. OK, I could then just click drag that macro and drop it into my new category. 
and I can also export my macro category in order to back it up or share it with other people. And finally, if you need to edit the macro, you can right click it and choose Edit Macro. We'll then move back to the macro panel and that will populate the steps here, even if it's later down the line, say we've reopened the app and we don't have those steps, we can go back and re-edit any macro in our library at any time. So there we go, just a quick overview about macros.